Gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen of the Fourth Estate, and welcome, welcome to this press briefing. A revolution is taking place in Sierra Leone, and we are all witnesses to it and participants. So I welcome you to this uh, press briefing. Um, as I said this morning on AYV, certain matters are going to be laid to rest today. But apart from laying to rest a particular issue that has become very topical, a number of other issues are going to be raised this afternoon. So, without much ado, I will now invite the future president of Sierra Leone, Mahaji. Okay, thank you very much for that, uh, our NGC members and supporters. Um, we appreciate that, um, but after that, let's keep it till the end, because this is really a press briefing. It's meant for the members of the Fourth Estate. Uh, you are here to support. Thank you very much. I will now hand over to Alhaji Dr. Kande Koloyumkela to make a statement. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Spencer. Colleagues, uh, members of the Fourth Estate, I was away, I came back 48 hours ago, and um, I've been listening to a number of allegations, so I, my party and I decided that we will come and address some of these issues directly. So I have some prepared remarks, and uh, they will be distributed as well at the end. So I'll read. Ladies and gentlemen of the Fourth Estate, my attention has been drawn to a series of articles alleging that I am currently a United States citizen and therefore cannot contest as member of parliament and subsequently for the presidency of Sierra Leone. I was away from Sierra Leone and returned two days ago when the debate was raging. I have convened you here today to respond to these allegations against me during the past week. I decided that in the interest of the public, there is need to clear the air and set the record straight. It is a fact that I have had dual nationality. It is also a fact that I renounced the US citizenship to fully comply with the 1991 constitution. I believe the Constitution is supreme and I am strongly of the view that the President, as fountain of honor and commander-in-chief of the armed forces, must have allegiance to only the country he or she leads or will be leading. Thus, voluntarily and because of my firm commitment to serve Sierra Leone, I renounced my U.S. citizenship to ensure that I fully qualify to run for parliament to represent my people of Samu in the Cambia district and to contest the position of president of the Republic of Sierra Leone. In other words, I made sure that I did not violate se Section 76, 1A of the 1991 Constitution. Today, before my formal nomination at the National Electoral Commission, I categorically say to you, the people of Sierra Leone, to you, the people of Sierra Leone, that as of this moment, I do not hold any other nationality nor do I have allegiance to any other country. I want to make it clear for the avoidance of any doubt 
that I am a citizen of one country in the world right now, and that is the Republic of Sierra Leone. And I repeat, my dear compatriots, that I renounced my U.S. citizenship because I believe it is an obligation and a call to duty to do so when you are running for the highest office. Let me now show you copies of this vaunted uh, um, certificate. Yeah? This is the certificate of loss of nationality of the United States government. Yeah? Now, I would have circulated this, but I have heard that the APC is so scared. This was their last play. And they might want to do litigation. I'm ready for them. But I have it. If, and I give you permission, yeah? I give you permission to go to the United States Embassy. They have an embassy here to ask whether indeed I am a, their citizen or not. The other document is called the, the Oath and Affirmation of Renunciation of Nationality of the United States Government. I have all my documentation ready. You have to put it in context. I have held very high positions. I have spent time with presidents. I have advised governments on public policy. I know the procedures and steps for things that I have to do. So yes, I renounce the US citizenship because I am convinced that at this moment, at this time in history, I should be serving the people of Sierra Leone to save them from this kleptocracy and manipulation we have. <laughs> Concerning the alleged Austrian citizenship, this is totally not true because Austria does not allow dual citizenship. All you have to do is Google. Go check for yourself. You will see foreign affairs uh, in the Austrian uh, uh, website. You can't hold two. So that's totally off. So for those who were thinking, that it is three sim or four sim. No, not in two sim. But the other sim, not there again. Now one sim, there now. <laughs> Thus, people are free to check the Austrian consul also in Sierra Leone as they are free to check the U.S. Embassy. That said, I encourage all leaders currently running for parliament and presidency to also come clean and declare their status as I have done. Same way. People are holding me to the highest standard. We all are trying to run for president. An allegation was made against me. My spokesperson spoke to you. The campaign manager spoke to you. I chose to come and talk to you myself and make my own declaration. Yeah? So I expect others to do the same who have similar allegations against them. I have taken this step advisedly to inform the people of Sierra Leone because I respect and honor them and I believe they deserve an explanation from me. NGC, we said yes. Anything, we face the public. We talk to them. That's why we also are looking forward to presidential debates. But on another note, I have followed with keen interest the debates on the differing views that have been preferred on interpretation of section 76, subsection one of the Constitution of Sierra Leone, act number six of 1991. It is refreshing to note that suddenly, suddenly, respect for the 1991 Constitution has taken center stage. Now let me turn to the broader issue of dual citizenship. Sierra Leoneans were granted the right to dual citizenship by the effort of Al Haji Ahmed Tijan Kaba, an honorable statesman who healed this nation after 11 years of a very divisive and dehumanizing civil war. He made every effort to unify this nation by encouraging tolerance and forgiveness. He recognized the rights of the hundreds of thousands of our brothers and sisters living abroad and their families to identify with their motherland and through the act of parliament he granted us all dual citizenship he also encouraged political pluralism 
and voluntarily relinquished power when his time was over. What we see now is a leadership determined to divide Sierra Leone. For purely selfish reason to hold on to power, it is a cabal. Unlike Ametijan cabal, making the effort to unify us, others are doing everything to divide this nation, even at the 11th hour when their time is finishing. Today, our democracy is under siege, and our constitution is being abused by a cabal that is convinced that they must hold on to power by any means possible. When he was in opposition, His Excellency Anes Baikuruma quoted, quoted, pleaded with the diaspora to support him and they helped to propel him to power. In fact, it is rumored right now that six persons of his ministers, six of his ministers and deputy ministers have dual nationality. This is not only deeply hypocritical, but also a violation of the 1991 Constitution. This is a shame. This is a shame. When people wanted power, they were running to the diaspora. Atlanta in particular. It is no surprise that three, four people from Atlanta were appointed. Immediately they took over. They didn't know about the law. Or, or else, it is the typical style of some in governance. They use you, they abuse you, and they dump you. <laughs> President Koroma cannot claim, and I repeat, President Koroma cannot claim to have been ignorant about the conflict between the 206 Citizenship Amendment and the Constitution. Because the issue was brought to his attention twice during his 10-year tenure. The Peter Tucker Commission a Constitutional Review Commission raised the issue and the Justice Cowan CRC also raised it and recommended amending the Constitution and, but the government white paper rejected the recommendation. The government white paper rejected. How can Mr. President claim he didn't know? He was in the opposition in Parliament. He doesn't know the laws of Sierra Leone. He claims that experience is valuable. He wants to tell me that he was appointing ministers, tens of them and others to high positions. He didn't know the law and he was a lawmaker. He wants to tell me that when they were debating the CRC report in cabinet, they didn't tell him about that section. Hypocrisy. This is, this is totally wrong. It is a deliberate attempt to divide this nation. Deliberate attempt. He cannot say he didn't. Ah, let us assume he didn't know. What is the Attorney General doing in this country? What is he doing? He didn't advise his president? All this time they are appointing people about the provisions in, in the government in, and in the Constitution? If you take another issue, if they were honest, you want to say diasporans cannot apply for APC symbol, you start with asking your ministers to resign who are dual nationals. You don't... The, Of the 1991 Constitution states as follows, and I quote, There shall be, in addition to the office of Vice President, such other offices of ministers and deputy ministers as may be established by the President, as may be established by the, by the President. So, the President as a pointer of ministers has a responsibility not to violate the Constitution when he is making ministerial appointments. Section 2A states, a person shall not be appointed a minister or deputy minister unless he is qualified 
to be elected as a member of parliament. Do you really believe that our president did not know this? Of course he knew. So if he has been appointing dual citizens as ministers, giving them symbols of his party to run for parliament, of course he knew he was violating the, the law and violating the constitution. So what is happening here? Constitutions are sacred. Those of us who did a little bit of government or did public policy, I have been, I taught public policy. I have been advising governments on public policy. You cannot use a constitution to hunt people. But you know, they get used to it. This nation sat here. When the vice president was sat, some of us wrote articles saying it is wrong. Ah, but you get used to it. After all, Saloma no go do nothing. This is not about Saloma no more. This is about our nation and our children. We will challenge this. We will challenge this. Enough is enough. Seven weeks to the end of a 10 year term. In fact, we give Bunya set. The term for London November. We don't give Bunya a match. But why you they manipulated the end? I'm being blunt now. Because this is an orchestrated, carefully choreographed. But it is typical of this governance system. The same diaspora supported them. Some came here. They didn't tell them anything. It was all cooked at State House. Where do they give certificates for symbols? The Supreme Authority is always involved and being direct because this is orchestrated by State House. I have my documents. I have my documents. Yes, I have my certificate of renunciation from the State Department. But, but we did not raise the issue. We did not raise it. The government raised it. We can also read constitutions. We have lawyers. We have many lawyers and judges who are part of our party. This country belongs to all of us. We cannot allow a small group of people raping our constitution continuously. When they like. Let me tell you more. It was wrong to dismiss Adirena Thomas. No one has the right to dismiss a chief justice in this country. No one. Ah, but then do and 207, nobody not talk. It is wrong to remove a governor of the central bank. You cannot even appoint a minister. But we sit on at this country the last two years. The governor of the central bank is protected by law. Because why? Those of us who are economists, we know you want to separate monetary policy from politics. Hey, but then pull gov central gov bank governor, nobody not talk. Of course you go pull vice president, say, nobody not talk. Now what do you do? You take the same constitution, last minute, as if you are holier than thou, ah, then one way one APC symbol, no forget her. Hey, you know, be know all this thing? You use the normal? But what you did was illegal too and unconstitutional. This is a repeated abuse of our constitution. We have to tell Anes Koroma, no. We are politicians now. It is not about him. We have said he is not running. Do the honorable thing like Tijan Kaba. Because he loved this nation. He took himself out of politics. Say, let the election go. Because he was trying to build a democracy. What do we have now? I live in the neighborhood. The whole streets are blocked for one week. Because why? Every symbol has to be given in the state lodge. It's an abuse of that house. There has to be standards and dignity in this country. There has to be standards and dignity. If you don't have standards, everything is low level. You destroy a nation. So what do you do now? Seven weeks before leaving power, you decide to find a club. Even the spokesman today, I'm happy he told everybody he's a Canadian. Yeah, but he shouldn't worry. Because when NGC wins, we will remove the discriminatory nature of uh, Section 76. We'll remove it. Abdullah Conte, His Excellency Abdullah Conte already, he's our best legal mind in the country. I know that I've been with him international. I know his reputation. He even advised, CRC advised, who stopped it? Government white paper. Oh, you, you, did, you, you knew it then, but you're only discovering it now? Hypocrisy. Look, my dear brothers and sisters, we are not in politics because we want power by any means. We are in politics because Sierra Leone is bigger than an individual or people. But they are not alone. Where was SLPP? Where was SLPP? Where was the opposition for 10 years? You sit in parliament. 
SLPP. You sit in parliament. They are violating the constitution, giving symbols to people who come with cash to defeat your own candidate. And you allow it for 10 years? It's a conspiracy of silence. This is why we tell you, you need something new. Each one wants to inherit the same bad machine. If this be non well, the constitution, Mr. Ade, use that to my advantage. That's the slogan for them. SLPP is complicit here too. But it is the same way in this nation. They allowed all kinds of bills to pass through that parliament, looting this nation 24-7. Even the last day of parliament, 7th of December, 2017, I have shown you, none of you have gone back to do the research. Go look at those companies that are now owners of your minerals. Ask yourself, who owns it? Not own Ayom Bikini and Geta. Why two, three people for form company, then they own bauxite mine in Apotloko? Now then grandpa, they mingi then. When I've been doing a real thing from colonial thing, saying it's a low man game minerals in this country, what in you now? You go research. Who owns those companies? I just came here from Metzke to look at a school that was demolished. And when you hear certain names coming up in certain things in this country, you should sit up. The corruption is a cabal. You should sit up. You ask who owns the bauxite concessions in Potloko? But look of people, I tell you, ask the question, who owns SL Mining? Who now owns the, the Potloco Bauxite Deposit? The same set of people robbing us, abusing our constitution, and they think we are all dumb. NGC is here to stay. NGC is here to stay. APC you know they scared we. This last minute maneuver, well, we're going to meet up we lawyer already. But yes, own self you own and say three sim for sim. Me, I don't can't see you. I get me certificate. Una I say I no get her. I be for shape and what are they wait for una? Why well, they resell legal? I even hear it now because something and they will get for talk na the campaign. I don't make una no want me there. We go ask who get SL mining. I no say me life there at risk. Then they warn me for the past three weeks all kind of intelligence information. Hey, me life safe. I not afraid now. But for the sake of salon, we will stand up to you. We will stand up to you. Now, now you are leaving. You are leaving power. What do you do? What do you do? Seven weeks before, you try to pit diasporans against locals. We are all Sierra Leoneans, for God's sake. And diasporans, I tell you, we will fight for your voting rights. When we come, you have the right to vote. You not get to pay two thousand dollar for camp. If the law for change, we will change the law. It's not impossible. We don't see other countries than the Duan. Guinea man, they vote in Ayan. Why we Saloma not for vote in Guinea? I assure you, we will change that law. But section 76. Would you go ask there why we Sabi law, better, better one? Not so we attorney general with the ask. Because I go allow all the things they are going to this country. By the way, but you say for a real allegation, no, but left and no mention you're a lawyer, they don't care if you go to court. But you say, now for check the house, oh. Now for check the house. If you they point finger by people, they don't forget say more they point by you. But this is wrong. Put your country first. Don't play tricks with people to divide a nation. So I am here. I came by myself. I, with the support of my party, Andrew, my running mate is here. We know NGC people get ready full force by the laws of Sierra Leone under our constitution. We will go and register on Saturday and do our nomination. It is our inalienable right to go to NEC and present our candidature. Whatever proof they have, we have. If they need authorization to fly to the United States State Department, we'll buy a ticket for them too. But let others come. Media, don't hold me to one high standard that goes to the moon and hold people low here in the mud. No, we all have the same standard. We expect others to come forward as well. It is a challenge I'm throwing. It's a challenge I'm throwing. That's why I'm standing in front of you. So with that, we will circulate my written text. I hope I didn't leave out other stuff that we had. They wanted to discipline me so that I go according to script. But I'm speaking my mind because I am here for NGC, for the people of Sierra Leone, and yes, Salon can force. Thank you, thank you, thank you.
you. Thank you. Now, I just want to draw my attention to something that the certificate. Okay, now, when I go on radio uh, two days ago, I talk say, Dr. Yung Kela don't renounce his citizenship as of November last year. I talk and back na AYB. They say me they lie. Then talk all kind of thing. The evidence denier. The evidence denier. Fact. Now if they want to continue for the argue, let them carry on the argue. Hmm? But as Dr. Yunkela don't say, he gets all in documents then ready. Then shift the nomination. They were supposed to do nomination today. But next don't shift time to Saturday. So Saturday, all we candidates for parliament and the presidency, they go for nomination across the country. I just want also to make one point before I take on a question them. That we filled 504 candidates out of 511 for local council elections across the country. Now, for parliament, we will get two or three or not a field, but then a strategic decision. Not to say no, we get people them move, we get people them, but for some reason we decide, say, and I know tell me the reason. We decide to not field candidate in a certain constituency them. But we feel all the other one them. Hmm? I can bet to none. None other new party in the history of this country not able for do what you would do so. So that one then where they talk, we call them here the talk. Oh, say no man and this in a free talk no more than they. Let them go up line. If we for field candidates across the country, that will tell them, say, with the all side. And I talk on this morning, uh, uh, AYV, this election where they cancel, March. Now, election in kind will not see a salon one day. The results will come up on that election day. So, man, they get for get attack. March 8th, where they go begin the results. So, man, then they get heart attack. And one thing we make a show now, NGC, after March 8th this year, NGC then a government. Yeah. Now, questions from the press. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Matik Salia is my name and I work for Star Radio. Yes. Um, Dr. Yumkela, you have made your points clear that you no longer a dual citizenship holder to seem as the common name now implies as at November last year, 2017 precisely. But I'm sure you're also aware that elections matters be fixed within a certain period before the polling day itself. Well, they say sometimes six months and the list goes on. So November last year to March, which is about less than two months from now, correct me if I'm wrong, will be less than six months. So don't you think it's, that's, that's a militation against um, the declaration they are making already? That's one. Um, secondly, um, NGC has a headquarter. Why have you brought us here instead of your usual headquarter where you're supposed to hold your, your meeting, you know, as usual political parties could do um, their, their meetings, you know? Uh, but, but finally, you said um, Adirena Thomas was, was dismissed wrongfully and the former bank governor in 2007 was also dismissed wrongfully. But you are aware also that it is a prerogative of the president to hire and fire um, people of elect in elected positions, such as the chief justice, the bank governor, the ministers, and the rest. So are you telling us that if elected as president of this country, those positions, if you appoint people to serve in them, 
you will not in any way fire them regardless of whatever the situation may be. Thank you. Thank you very much. My name is Melvin Tijanman Sage. I write for the Trumpet newspaper. Dr. Kande Yunkela, should your nomination is challenged in the court, do you have faith in the judiciary? Secondly, why are you contest presidency and that of member of parliament? Fimi. My name is Mr. Kerbo. I work for Sky Radio. Um, doctor, you spoke about um, the dual citizenship which President um, Kaba encouraged and now you have denounced the citizenship. Some people in the U.S. are okay with um, their green cards or residence permits. But some people have reasons for that, and some people have reasons for going for citizenship. What was exactly the reason that led you um, to request for a U.S. citizenship? I'll just tell you the last thing is personal, so that's my privacy. And if you check the U.S., it's private. It's like my medical records, yeah? So it's my own volition, my own decision. I'm a free man. Yeah, I chose to do it. And I have the legal right. Um, do I have faith in the judiciary? My brother, I, am, I believe there are people in the judiciary who care about Sierra Leone more than you and me. They are at a point in their careers now, particularly in the Supreme Court, where it is about Sierra Leone. I have to have faith for now. But what I know is I have my documents ready. I would have given it to you, but I know. I, I, you know, the 99 tactics are done. There is nothing left. They've tried each one, but we're still here. So they had to invent 99.5. This is the one. And, uh, uh, tactic 99.5, you know what I mean. So we are preparing ourselves for litigation too. But we are piling their own litigation also ready. Yeah? We are all preparing. Let them prepare their case file. We prepare our own. We'll all end up in the same place. Um... Why am I running for parliament and presidency? That's what I want to do. I am here to stay. I was born in Kichok, in the Samu Chiefdom. You know, they made me like this, tough warrior. Yeah? So, I want to represent them. I want to do development there. Ah! But honest to God, I want to defend your rights in parliament too. If that's what I have to do. You know what some people said? Ah, you're not going to do that one, they did below one. Nothing is below me, yeah? as long as there is dignity in public service. But I will not sell my soul. Yeah, I will not just compromise. I will not do it. Otherwise, some of us would have been somewhere else by now. Because that's what others did. Cross carpets quickly. Um, the first question. My dear friend, six months, one year, one month. We in the NGC... We are prepared. Whether any time comes, we know the schedules. We have people, as you see them around here. What I don't know, they know 10 times better than me. My brother here has been in this country 42 years, my friend. Eh? So whatever I don't know, I can come here. On the law and processes and timeline. Now lawyer then sit down so. Tijan is not here today. But yeah, he's at the back. Is lawyer camera in the room? We've looked at timelines. We know we're within the law. The law has its, did not specify timetables for things. Just like that, casual. But whatever is in the Constitution and in the Acts, we've reviewed them very carefully. Why here? Well, this is the beauty of NGC. We get freedom. Mr. Get Space done around this area. Okay, everybody. We can do our meetings anywhere. It's the freedom. But you know, we are compassionate. We didn't want you going all the way to Wilkinson Road. You see, then not to make a credit to that chairman, then it's bright uh, Ali. They say, no, let's not have people move because it's a sudden notice. Yeah? Because I wasn't in the country. If we had planned this way ahead, we would have said that they have enough notice to go to Wilkinson Road. But it is also because we have friends and members of the party that have infrastructure. Next time I take you to Ambassador Dabo's office. Look, what we want to bring back to governance in Sierra Leone is standards and values. If we have a parliamentary act that protects the position of governor, make sure when you're appointing a governor, you appoint the right person. If the law says the tenure does not coincide with your own, it doesn't. Yeah? So we will look at these acts. There is a reason why they were done. If they're not good enough, we'll change them.
But any position that is sacred, we will keep it sacred. What has happened here in 10 years, everything is ad hoc. You can dismiss a vice president as you like. Supreme authority. The constitution is what is supreme, not an individual. That's what we believe. It's the rule of law that is supreme. And that is why I've spent quality time with these lawyers. You know, imagine when you have five lawyers in the room. I listen, I make notes. And I like when they disagree because I'm learning about the nuances of language. So yes, my brother, any position that is sacred is sacred. But one of the things Andrew and I care about the most is depoliticizing institution. In this country, everything now pass you get party card. The universities are politicized. Police is, is politicized. Everything is politicized. We don't want that. We want to give people professionalism. That is necessary if we're going to progress. So there are institutions that we will reform, give them their tenure of service, professional, so they're proud, especially our security services. And by the way, I repeat, if you hold to SIM, you then are government now, minister, vice minister, do your left. If Monday you know left, would they begin calling him? Would they begin calling him? Would they begin calling him? Some man don't glad for the beat bats up and some of we. Who say they go find Gumbe now? If you know, say you're a minister, you deserve now, or vice minister, do you? Do the honorable thing. Own up, own up, and stand up like a man and lead. Three more questions and we go. We have some other events. Three more questions. We'll circulate. Is my text ready to be circulated? Okay, please distribute. All right, I think you have all the information. Okay, one more there. Give it to him. Yeah. We'll circulate my official statement. Good afternoon. I am Abdul Sila. I am yes. for Unique Newspaper. Yes. And Doc, I want to know how you resolve the issue of nomination because we understand that on the same day um, you will be nominated uh, at NEC and yes. as you just disclosed, you are going for parliamentary yes. seat as Kishon. So yes. how have you resolved that? Question? Well, um, we have how many hours? Eight hours in the day. I am sure the NEC also knows it's my constitutional right. I am sure they will allow me enough time to do both nominations. I need to demonstrate that to the youth of this country, that it is honorable to even serve in parliament. In fact, they should want to serve in parliament. As I've said to young people, I try to encourage young people to run as well. Those who create the laws of your nation are very important people in your country. The second arm of government. So I know NEC would want me to demonstrate to the next generation that Dr. Young Kela de Gaulle apply now, like anybody else, for be parliamentarian. So yes, I have been told it is doable. From Freetown to Cambia is two and a half hours. I do it often. So I know I can go to Cambia. In fact, my people are already gathering now. And don't begin make Aujo and Soko for welcome me. Last one. Oh, okay, one there and then the last one in front. That's me cool, All right, for this paper. And you see, even with the, the presentation of this um, certificate, we are very much apprehensive in the sense that we are anticipating a litigation. So I want to know on which ground do you think a litigation will be filed against you, if at all you take taken to court? I'm not apprehensive. I'm just telling you, as strategists in NGC, we are prepared for any eventuality. That's the way you plan. Any eventuality. We know we are ready for any eventuality, my brother. But we are very confident. Saturday, sharp 8 o'clock in the morning, will they go nominate? Yeah. Sharp 8 in the morning, not so. Sharp 8. Dr. Yunkala, good afternoon. I'm Precious Levy from Star Radio and Television. Uh, the Women's Situation Room put out a press statement about the low inclusion in of the women given symbols so how has the ngc been going about it in terms of incorporating the women yeah. being part of decision making in the country yes we we've tried very hard eh? we tried very hard some brave women came forward some of them have gotten symbols and i can assure you when you see haja memuna you see ij kabai you see yasmin and some other women i know they gave us hell. Each time we look at a list, they say, no, not yet, until we check that you made a real effort to get women. We got some. 
not as much as we would have wanted, but yes, we have some very strong women who will be running for councillor and also parliament. We even approach 50-50, that's on record. We say, do you have any list on the To be true to form, the other person who is a strong gender person, now this man, the chairman, you know, that the NGO person, international NGO. So on civil society, women and others, is also very strict on that. We got those that we could get. It is not easy, and I should make a statement about that. It is hard in this country when people have a history of violence in their mind for women to come forward. They know the rigors of constituency level politicking. We gotta change that as well. So make it comfortable for our women folk to be able to stand up and be counted as lawmakers. Last one. Yeah, um, Abdraman from a Salon Times newspaper. Doc, um, you and the PPRC, we are having some contention relating to your colors. Um, what have you guys done towards that? Yeah. And um, finally, um, with all the adjective that you've described, the Anes Baikroma left government, would Anes ba the Anes Baikroma government go scot free with the NGC in power? Thank you. Hey, hey, let me put it this way. You cross the bridge when you get there. We, we, let me put it in context. And I ask you, you know, I make speeches and I stick to what I say. Yeah? If you go back, you will see me saying before I arrived in this country, and they spun it the wrong way. I said, I am not here. I'm not coming to Sierra Leone to run against somebody. I am coming here to create a future. What has propelled me in my career? It is not dwelling on what is wrong. It is dreaming and spending time thinking of the new things I can create, innovation. So my team here, we are dreaming when we are in meetings. If you, if you look in, it's like we are in a space shuttle going to Mars. We are dreaming of the new Sierra Leone, not the old one, not the kleptocracy. You heard me use the word hypocrisy. Now hypocrisy. People then they, they hold three three sim. Then they discriminate against the young brother and the party. Say you know go get symbol. But you should don't pan three sim. Then you wait this last minute. Where people fight for you, good, good one. Then they send dollar. You say one are not important again. Why? Because of witch hunt. The constitutions are not created around the world for witch hunting. They are sacred institutions for posterity. We will resist. And I say it on television and everywhere. You the youth, the supporters of NGC, you the students, let us show on Saturday that we will march for freedom. For us, Saturday is the beginning of the freedom march. And we prove to the APC and whoever that you will not intimidate us. We will stand up for our right. People power will prevail in this country now. It will prevail. We are peaceful people, but the constitution protects us. On colors, don't worry, we are rainbow. We are listening very well to PPRC. We are following their guidelines. I see some people sitting amongst you. I like their multicolor. Would they copy any color now? We'll see we get Boku color. What's in do? NGC, any color they walk. If you get blue safe, you put white line, you put red line there across. Once not three color, it will work. That's the beauty of NGC. We are rainbow, every tribe, every religion, everybody. We see some others now playing tricks. They want to divide this nation now. Every trick in the book, everybody who does not have substance, and that is what is bad now. They're lowering the standards of governance. We want to lift it up again. So some of you are proud to be, yes, I'm a member of parliament. That's what we grew up in in the 60s. We had parliamentary, go, uh, you should buy the book by the, the father of Roland Wright. He was the first clerk of the Sierra Leone Parliament. When I go read that book, let you see the people that we create with country, where then they talk about Willis Johnson there, let you know what he mean for being parliamentarian. Where then they challenge, you see the argument, you see English, but in the fact for common man. That's the prestige. That's why Dr. Yumkela, the international global citizen, goes back to run for Samo. For let go worldwide, and I've sent it worldwide. That I, Dr. Yumkela, global citizen, I don't come and they go run for a village called Samu, a chiefdom. So people know that it is prestigious, it is an honor 
for you to serve your people. Not the crooked kleptocracy that we've had here. Silent opposition condoning and aiding and abetting criminality in this country. As I said, I've been threatened. The threats are coming in. I've been told to double my security at home. I will do it. Volunteers will come. I'll apply to the police. But I put you on notice. I am serving the people. I will defend them and I'll defend myself by standing on the law. I'm not scared of anybody. But I know my life is at risk now because we, we they begin talk now. When they begin talk true, the Kuda gets all thin at the nation. That the people of Salon Keta, not to one person or one family. Thank you very much. For the National Grand Coalition, um, we would like you to clarify, you've already done it live, but we want you to clarify with the issue of the dual citizenship, which has been a bone of contention around the media circle, around social media, around the public with regards to your citizenship. Well, um, as I have said in the press conference, I had dual nationality before. As I speak to you, I renounced my United States citizenship to be consistent with Section 76 of the Constitution. And yes, I only hold one citizenship, that of the Republic of Sierra Leone, right now. So tell us what preparations are you for um, with regards to the upcoming elections, i.e. Um, the nominations for councillors, um, members of parliament, and your mayoral candidate, candidate as well. Are you up to the task? Can you make it to fill in all the constituencies and wards across the country? Well, I have the good news for you. We are the only political party, apart from APC and SLPP, that has as many councillors and members of parliament as those two parties do, of 504, which means we have candidates from Krubola all the way to Koindu. So it shows that we're a broad-based party right across the country. 99% of the council oppositions we have candidates for. For the parliamentary elections, we have filled all but four. All but four. We chose not to fill the rest. Yeah. So we are very confident. After us, no other party, apart from APC and SLPP, is able to do so. So we are ready. And on Saturday, across this nation, the NGC machine will wake up to take everybody for nomination. And I myself will, will go for nomination at NEC for presidential, as a presidential candidate. And I'll go to Cambia to be nominated for parliament to represent Samu constituency 062. Just the other day, um, I spoke to um, lawyer Charles um, Francis Magai, the leader of the PMDC, and he has saying that he's been having dialogues with your party together with other parties with regards to a grand alliance. And they are saying that you have to, all of you have to come together to see whether there's a possibility of you putting one candidate in front to um, um, fight against the APC to see if we can bring a change, as all of you are saying. What's the latest on that? We're still in dialogue. Uh, the dialogue continues. I know the clock is ticking. We have seven weeks to go. So hopefully very soon, we'll come to an understanding. Would you step down for our lawyer, Charles Magai, if you come to an agreement? Having left the UN, coming into politics, is there a possibility that you would stand down for anybody in the Grand Alliance? Look, in forming an alliance or strategic partnerships, anything could happen. What is important is reality check. Which engine is the strongest engine to take us to the finish line? Today in this country, we know NGC is the new force. NGC is the biggest force for change. So in a, One strategic alliance. So in other words, it's Francis Magai um, um, rallying under the umbrella of the popularity of the NGC so far because he has been in politics before you, but you have gravitated into a momentum in which now you are calling yourself the third force. I'm not a third force, but I'm the new force. And the NGC is the new force. We believe this moment, the momentum we have, we are the number one force in the country. The youth are responding in numbers. So I'm just saying to those with whom we are discussing, seven weeks before election is, is about pragmatism. Do we want change? Which engine can deliver that change and victory? Because we can be victorious under the NGC. Okay, do you think that the uh, present government, that's the APC, use the issue of the dual citizenship law to stifle 
the opposition or was it as a cause of necessary precaution because of pending petitions which might come after the elections? Because apparently this law was amended in 2006. The APC came up with that gimmick. It's a gimmick. It's a charade to say they are for legality and constitutionality. The people who abuse the constitution the most, it is just the witch hunt. That's all it is. If they were sincere, the first thing you do, you ask all your serving ministers who have dual nationality to seem and three seem to step down first before you discriminate against your own children. It is a sign of disrespect for the Sierra Leonean people, disrespect for the diaspora, and in fact, disrespect for our constitution. You abuse it for 10 years. Then you come, Johnny come lately, seven weeks before election, suddenly you have a, a, a discovery? Come on, if you know APC as much as we know, you know they are not ma that magnanimous. Okay, finally, um, Dr. Kade Kole Imkela, women, especially APWA, and the All Political Women's Association, have cried foul that many political parties have not involved women in awarding them symbols for parliament, um, for councillorship. Is the NGC um, giving a certain amount of percentage to women with regards to awarding them symbols and um, members of parliament? Because, of course, you've already chosen your running mate. We have given it very serious consideration. We have very strong women in the NGC who have strongly been on those committees. In fact, we put a woman to chair our candidature, uh, candidature committee to make sure that we were honest with our agenda. Uh, 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 um, pro pronouncements. All I can say is we have good women who have received symbols for councillorship and uh, uh, to be members of parliament. I can't give you a number now. We're looking, we have another meeting today to look at the numbers, but I do believe the whole nation, we have a difficulty getting women because of the past history of violence and discrimination against women. But we're doing our best. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Kane Kole-Imkela, for talking to AYV's Insight on the Primetime News. Thank you for having me.